Well, it was a tough loss inside Raymond James Stadium. We've been saying that a lot this season. The Bucks are now 1-3 and three at home. That's a big problem because we're only going to be here twice in the next two months of action. Yeah. So they're going to have to produce on the road. When we told Tristan Wurst that they had so many games coming up on the road, he said, oh, blank. You know, you could fill that in with a curse word um, and, and then, you know, shook it off. But there's a lot to discuss in this 16-13 loss to the Falcons. What was the one thing that stood out to you, David? Uh, first of all, that was a tough watch uh, for us because I don't think either team played particularly well. I know the Falcons played well enough to win this game, yeah. but they did not play well in general. Neither team did. We saw mistakes on both sides. I'm sure they've got pages of things to correct. The Bucks, unfortunately, have less time to correct those mistakes with the game in Buffalo on Thursday. But when you take a look at the rushing attack of Tampa Bay. We've been talking about it all season and you see the way that they struggled again. You start asking like, what is the answer? What can you do? Do you give the ball to Sean Tucker more because you've tried Keyshawn Vaughn? Do you limit Rashad White's carries even more? What What is the answer there? And I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, and, and I don't know if Dave Canales or Todd Bowles truly has an answer either. They're going to say they're going to go back, work on it, correct some things, yada, yada, yada. We've heard this for about a year and a half now. The fact is, I don't know if they have the personnel yeah. to really execute what Dave Canales wants to do with his rushing attack. And if you watch what they do in Seattle and the need for tight ends and running backs to fit a certain scheme, he has acquired guys that don't necessarily fit that scheme. So either A, Dave Canales has to force force a round peg into a square hole and say, you know what, we're going to learn this system and it might not be great this year, but next year or by the end of the year, it will all come together. Or he has to abandon it and work with his personnel and just say, we'll figure this out in the offseason and regroup. I will say an adjustment was they passed more. They did. Yeah, they they did. came out, even the first two drives, 12 passes, five rushing attempts. The problem is Every time they rush the ball, you're necessarily you're, you're you're working against yourself at that point. They had 70 plus rushing yards, which I would say is is a heck of a time for this offense. Except Baker Mayfield had 31 of them on a scramble, yep. a huge play for him, and we'll get into his play in general in a bit. But the rushing attack is a problem. I asked Chris Godwin if that is an issue in the red zone, and he says it is, and he doesn't want to put it on the offensive linemen or the running backs. The wide receivers can block better; they can get open more. Uh, there's a lot going on there in the red zone, but their inability to score in the red zone is a huge problem. They only had two opportunities, failed on both of them, and they have to run it in the red zone or else you're going to see what Atlanta did on that second red zone possession where the Bucks had a chance to take the lead, and they're going to drop everyone back yep. in the end zone. Good luck finding a hole here. They are daring you to run it, and they know you won't do it because... You don't have faith in it, and, and none of the fans do either. Yeah, and, and you could hear it. I mean, I get on the field final five minutes of the game, and everyone's yelling for them to pass. And if you're dropping eight guys, I don't really know how you expect Baker Mayfield. I mean, even if Tom Brady was the quarterback, you do understand eight guys in the secondary is difficult to pass against. So uh, the Bucks, I, I know the red zone, the, the running game, everything wasn't really working for them. But Baker continued to say in the press conference that they're close. He's saying the plays are – are there they just aren't making them he can see them they understand immediately okay that's what went wrong and they just have to fix that and I think we're just waiting for them to say okay not not just we're close anymore but like you just do it because yeah. that's that's going to be the difference that's how you win this division because when it came down to it the Falcons just did it and kicked for basically literally kicked you out of first place yeah and uh and it it came down to what we'll say is a busted coverage at the end. Sure. It's tough to really hammer on the defense too much. On one hand, they gave up 400-plus yards. Not a great showing from them. Uh, but then again, held the Falcons 1-5 of five in the red zone, forced three turnovers in the red zone. Uh, so, you know, they, they made some huge plays. I don't think they played a great game, yeah. but they made some huge plays. And, uh, and then at the end, they had a chance to get their team off the field and into overtime. They didn't get it done. So definitely an issue there, especially when you give up 150-plus yards of rushing yards, yep. something that the Buccaneers pride themselves in. we got to stop the run. we got to stop the run. They didn't do that. And, uh, and luckily, Desmond Ritter bailed them out a couple of times you know, with fumbles or a drop-snap exchange. Yeah. Um, so, so that was a problem. And Bajan didn't even get a carry tonight. Didn't even have to deal with him. Uh, he was sick. Yeah. So he, got, he got one carry at the end of the game. Oddly enough, I don't know why he got placed then <laughs> at that point. But... Now they have to turn it around. 
the NFC South is a little bit out of their hands. They'll have a chance to to take care of business in Atlanta in the future. Yeah. But they now have Thursday night football in Buffalo against a team that just lost to the Patriots. They had a, you know, a rough showing against the Giants the week before yep. in prime time. You know that fan base is going to be rowdy. And uh, the one thing that the Bills do really poorly is stop the run. <laughs> the one thing the Buccaneers can't do is run the ball. So that's going to be the matchup here. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting. I know passing the ball has been the way that the Bucks have found success. We talked a little bit about it in the first quarter or just in the first half, the run replacement plays where you kind of have the jet actions to Devin Tompkins, who hopefully doesn't dance and fumble the ball yep. next time around. But you have the screens. You have ways that you can kind of pick up those short yardage that a run would do, and that might be the strategy. But when it comes down to it, you do have to run the football in the NFL. You have to. And the Bucks have not been able to do it. Give credit to the Falcons because that actually is a good defense. Like it is. They're I know very we're, good. We're used to the Falcons having a bad defense over the years, but that's actually a really good unit. But – Tampa Bay's got to find a way to run the ball going against Buffalo, being on the road just in general, because you, you do not have an easy slate coming up. Like, this is a tough stretch, and now you're behind the eight ball because, again, you lost first place today. Yeah. So they're going to have to regroup very quickly, flush it out. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing because you can't necessarily correct it as quickly. Right. Uh, the good part is that you get to play right away and immediately move on. So we'll see this group in Buffalo on Thursday night. They'll have a mini buy. The first buy they had really worked against them, as we've seen the last yep. couple of weeks. Yep. Maybe they can get some things corrected. But um, moving forward, the offense has to perform better. The, the defense has to get more three and outs yep. to get their offense in more fortuitous field positions. It's one thing to force turnovers. It's another to help your offense out because, because they need it. And I hate to put that pressure on the defense, but a lot of the money is on the defensive side of the football yep. outside of Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, yep. offensively speaking. So, That's true. you know, you get paid to do that, uh, and, and so you got to step up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, again, the Buccaneers, 3-3 three and three on the season, uh, still very much in the mix for the NFC South Championship, but the, the road and the buffer they could have created by winning today, that opportunity is gone. And uh, we'll see you next time here from Ray J against the Titans in a few weeks.